So what exactly is pH? And if it's low, what can we do about it? What causes it? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, Devin Thrift Dudes, where I'm here to help you guys make reefing easy. Now today, Eric writes in and he asks, what is the proper pH for a reef tank? And what are the best ways to raise this up? Now, before we get into that, let's get a bit of understanding what exactly pH is. Now, if you want to get very deep into it, it's actually a very kind of technical logarithmic measurement. But for the simplified version, pH is the measure of rel the relative concentration of hydroxide ions and hydroxyl ions. So what this measurement does essentially tells us if our pH is acidic or alkaline. Now, a pH of 7 is considered neutral. Above 7 is alkaline and below 7 is acidic. So pH levels are tied to the CO2 and alkalinity levels in your aquarium. As CO2 enters the water, it's going to make your water more acidic, which in turn lowers your pH. Now, a few other things that can affect this. If your house has really high CO2 contents from, you know, lots of people in your house, you got pets and they're breathing all day, all that is going to create a higher concentration of CO2 in the air, which is going to make its way into your aquarium and lower your tank's pH. So what else can lower tank's pH? So we have a low pH issue. What are we going to do about it? One of the first and easiest things you can do is open up a window in your house. By releasing more of the CO2 out of your house, you're going to have a higher concentration of oxygen with lower CO2, and that's going to in turn be absorbed into your tank. And that alone should help boost your pH. Now there's a few other more things we can do to step this up a bit. The next one would be surface agitation. Take your power heads and point them more towards the surface of your tank, which is going to cause more of a rippling and promote gas exchange. Another thing you can do is use a air bubbler or a wooden aerosol inside of your sump. So this can create little micro bubbles inside your sump, again injecting oxygen. Now a couple things on that, you want to make sure that the air pump is outside of your stand so you're pulling in fresh air into it. Now if you really want to step that up, you could take your air bubbler and run the hose outside of your house. Now this not everyone wants to drill a hole in the side of their house and this is only going to work if your tank's close to an outside wall but if you drill a little hole through your wall and you run an airline in you can either run it to your air pump and then turn your air bubbler in the sump or you can run it directly into your skimmer intake and either one of those are going to have a huge boost on pH so that's a really good option if you know you own the house and you're able to get a little tiny tube to run outside and connect it to the air pump or the skimmer. Now a few other things you can do that aren't quite as extreme if you can do drip kelp wash into your tank and it has a pH of around 11 or 12. So you drip that in it's going to slowly up your pH. Now if you're doing other dosing means that may or may not work for you, having calcium reactor can also lower your pH. Because you have such a low pH coming out of that, you're injecting CO2 into the chamber and that's in turn dissolving the coral skeleton. Normally that's going to be lowering your CO2 as you drip it back into the tank. So a few things you can do, you can add on a second chamber which in turn will help raise the pH. It will give that acidic water more dwell time with the coral skeleton or that aragonite, which will help absorb it and raise it up. And the second thing, which I found actually the most effective, was put a drip cup on the affluent output line. So that gave it more time to off gas. And if you really want to speed it up and do a big boost, you can put a little air sewn in there. So all those bubbles will help force the CO2 out of the water and then you'll be dripping a higher pH solution into your tank and kind of negative negates the calcium reactor's low pH. Now, a couple other things to do, if you have a canopy on your tank, you can put a little PC fan in the canopy and have it blowing through. Just bringing that fresh air into your tank rather than it be an enclosed environment. You can do the similar thing in your sump, leave a sump door open. So all these little things can help. Now, I haven't tried this personally, but I know one of BRS videos with Ball Grease Fly, they have a CO2 absorbent media. Now, from what I understand, this stuff is not cheap, but you can put on the intake to your skimmer and it's going to suck the CO2 out of the air. So you're only putting straight oxygen and not CO2 into your tank. So that again will help do it, but it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but that's up to you. I mean, if you got some extra cash to try it, by all means. And if it works, let us know below. So I know some pet stores sell a thing like pH buffers. Um, and essentially what that is, is just dose down into your tank and it's not going to help. It's going to be a temporary thing and it's just a disaster. So do avoid those. One of the more natural ways you can help doing it um, to help with pH swings. 
So when your lights are on, your co corals, your stuff, everything's photosynthesizing. It's absorbing the CO2 in your tank. At nighttime, that process isn't happening. So a lot of people run a refugium, which is kind of like a macro algae, chado or something in there on a reverse cycle. So there's a light in your sump that turns on when your display tank turns off. So there's always photosynthesis happening just in a different part of your tank. So that'll, that's not necessarily going to raise your pH a bunch. I mean, it very well could, but for the most part, you're keeping it more stable instead of having the ups and downs with it. What are the acceptable or average kind of pHs of the tank? So let's say anywhere from about 7.6 to 8.4 would be an acceptable range, but an ideal range would be about 8 to 8.3. That's kind of the targeted goal range. Now my tank, it's only around 7.8 to 8 if I'm lucky. I've tried a bunch of different things and it's helped a bit, but nothing's been that magic bullet for me. So essentially I've just stopped chasing it. My curls are encrusting, they're growing. So I've gave up on chasing it. It's not necessarily something that you need to do. It's more a nice to ideal do. Your corals will grow a bit faster if you're in that magical kind of eight to 8.3, but it depends on your environment and if that's gonna happen. So assuming your tank is at an equilibrium with the CO2 in the outside air, meaning that's not gonna affect it anymore, alkalinity would determine your pH to an extent. So if you have a higher alkalinity, it essentially buffers it and allows you to have a higher pH. So that's something else to consider is raising up your alkalinity a bit if it's on the low end. I try and keep mine around 8.5. I know some people keep it anywhere from 9 to 11, which in turn would also help bump up your pH. Now, if you are doing this and playing with alkalinity or calcoas or any of those other things, one of the biggest things is a reef tank in general to keep things happy is keeping it stable. So you want to keep, try and keep your alkalinity stable all the time, every day. So if you test your tank one day and it's, you know, 8.5, test it 24 hours later, it should still be 8.5. You don't want to have big swings because anything that's going to stress your coral and you're going to cause more harm than good. So hopefully that gave you guys a good understanding of what exactly pH is and what different ways you can go about trying to raise it. So don't chase the numbers, but you can implement these things to help boost it up and it should see some benefits in your tank. Now, if you guys have some questions, head over to reefdudes.com ask and fill the form, submit a question, and I will try and do a video update as soon as I can. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. Otherwise, make sure you're a subscriber because I'm pumping out videos as much as I can. I love doing this. I do have a lot of fun making videos. And as long as you guys enjoy it, I'm going to keep doing it. So hit that subscribe button and check it out. Another quick thing since we're here. Uh, for injecting air into your tank, another thing you might want to look at is micro scrubbing bubbles. Or you can check out that video. Or you could subscribe. Cheers.